Hello, welcome to Veganica, probably the most radical vegan channel from Poland. Please support my channel if you are vegan, although only part of my videos are in English. Down below there is a link to playlist my videos in English and I promise to upload uh, videos in English from now on regularly. In today's video I would like to pertain to two videos from two vegan channels which I really love. Those are channels called uh, Lifting Vegan Logic and David Rams. Mainly I will focus on the topic from Lifting Vegan Logic because there is also a topic which I have already commented on in my own language in Polish. Um, if you are Polish then here is a link to the Polish video. And I'm talking about the video Killing a cow is the same as killing a human. Uh, then I will switch to David Ram's video on actually a completely different topic, but you will see there will be some connection. This is something important because that's true. We, us as vegan, we are very often blamed to protect animals allegedly more than humans. And my first remark on this topic is that I don't know why, uh, but many vegans start to explain themselves at this point. They start being defensive. And I heard on many vegan channels that all of them, they admit, of course, I evaluate humans' life higher. All of them seem to have a kind of sense of guilt. They feel guilty for loving animals. It seems like that. And that's very interesting because on the contrary, ordinary people don't mind admitting in service that they are grieving the loss of their pets much more than they cry after death of their parents or uh, siblings. So ordinary people seem to be more brave in admitting they love animals, they really love, uh, than vegans. Is it that strange? Why all the vegans start explaining and start being defensive at this point? In this video, I would like to introduce my personal view on this topic, but also I will try to introduce objective truth about it. My God is reality. My Bible is quantum physics, physics and mathematics, stuff like that. But first, please let me read my own comment below Lifting Vegan Logic's video. Here it is. Each body is a container of 100% of one's life. Each life is everything that one has. So you cannot make difference between 100% versus 100%. Everything versus everything. Every body is equal to the value of the whole universe. And when the cow dies, the whole universe, including God, if somebody likes to tell so, are meaningless, lose the whole sense, stop existing. At least from the perspective from the cow, which is the same valuable perspective as ours. It's based of, on the theory of relativity. Physics teaches us that each point of reference is equal, which means that our perspective is the same equal as perspective of a cow. So uh, to ask about the value of life, of cow's life, addressee of the question is cow herself. Taking the cow's life, we are taking away everything she has. Taking human's life, we are taking 100% the human possesses. It's 100% versus 100%, everything versus everything. Every life's value is infinite, absolute. The value of life is absolute in every case. And life is everything we have. So can we compare infinity versus infinity? From mathematical point of view, it is possible. It's not the case from mathematical point of view that each infinity is equal. There might be one infinity bigger than another. The typical example is a comparison of infinity of even numbers versus all the numbers. Of course, even numbers are half of all the numbers. Yet, in both cases, we have infinity. So who is to judge 
which infinity is more valuable infinity of the value of our lives or cow's life who is to judge the value of life the person which the question concerns you can judge only regarding the value of your life the value of cow's life can be judged only by the cow each other opinion is completely subjective when i was at school i realized that i was smarter than other kids actually i had the opinion of so-called golden child so i judged other pupils as brainless so from my perspective it looked as if there was nobody living in their heads so from my perspective i might have said that the value of my life is much higher because i know i experience thoughts in my head and and when i was looking at other kids my impression was that those other heads were empty as if nobody had lived there so <laughs> okay this is maybe funny but isn't this kind of experience that you could have experienced many times that you experience your own life maybe you also had some ideas like do other people truly exist maybe i am the only being in the world because you are experiencing only your own f- being you cannot judge how other people feel whether they feel at all whether there are any thoughts in their heads maybe those other heads are empty maybe nobody's living there it's the same we are judging animals we think they are lower less sentient but why and so you said i think your name is dane am i correct so dane you said animals are less sentient and you admit that of course human life's value is higher than animal i would like to know where does your knowledge come from how do you know that animals are less sentient because when i'm observing animals i have quite opposite opinion look their senses are sharper than ours they smell thousands times more than we do they hear much more and look at how much of our inner experience and inner world comes from senses for example i love music i'm a musician and you can see me just listening to music and i'm going through ecstasy but from your perspective you see i'm doing nothing i'm just sitting and you might judge oh her life is so boring she's just sitting and doing nothing it's so boring that's from your perspective but how can you know what kind of inner life i have thanks to my senses so if we are experiencing so much ecstasy thanks to our hearing and we can listen to music and really experience something amazing can you even dare to imagine what is the impression of smelling so much because me i can't imagine i can't imagine how many kinds of ecstasies animals can go through thanks to their sense of smell and also hearing look we also say that uh, people humans are more conscious there are several definitions of consciousness but let's um, let's look at one of them and let's define today let's define uh, consciousness as awareness so are you really sure that we human are more aware because if our dogs or pigs sense of smell is much much stronger more intense than ours maybe the right correct answer would be that pigs awareness is higher than ours look of how many things the pig is aware of her surroundings then we human will never ever have a chance to be aware of we have no idea we will never imagine what is her what is the inside experience of a pig or any animal so judging that they are less sentient and their life is less valuable as ours is exactly the same as me judging in past that other kids are empty inside and nobody is living there 
and I was the only person with thoughts and feelings. This was also a very funny situation because from my perspective, when I judged other kids as thoughtless, so my impression was that there was nobody in those other heads of other children. But this was also very funny how other kids perceived me uh, because I was very fast thinking. So they called me sometimes computer. I was very good in maths and physics, uh, you know, this kind of stuff. Uh, so they used to call me a computer. And one girl told me, you are only computing, but there are no feelings in you. <laughs> this was so funny because she had no idea. <laughs> Actually, I'm also an artist and uh, that's the main problem of mine that I have always been too sensitive, too much emotional. So I chose music, which was probably not the best choice for me. So look, in each case, those are very subjective opinions and we should avoid that. You also defined something like moral value in a very interesting way. Uh, you said that a human has a capacity to generate more welfare in his life. Therefore, you judge a human as of a higher moral value. I think that's your own very personal definition of moral value. And each person may have a different definition, what is moral value for him. But even inside this definition, let me question it. Are you sure that human has a higher capacity to generate welfare? Because when I look at my guinea pigs, I have many guinea pigs here around me. I look how crazy they are when they are happy. And I think you don't need even a guinea pigs. You know dogs, you know how happy the dogs are able to be. They are happy just to be alive. So I think in this meaning, animals are much more true. Animals don't need a fancy car to experience some joy or a little bit of happiness. Animals have capacity to experience happiness, extreme happiness ecstatical happiness just because being alive. As long as they are healthy, nothing bothers them. They experience very ecstatic joy. You, I don't know if you have ever seen popcorning for, of guinea pigs. Please check it out in, on YouTube. What is popcorning? How guinea pigs express their happiness, their feeling of joy. When you look at them, you learn, you start learning what the life means. We can learn from animals what life means. They are just alive and they are fully happy. Look at the dogs. Go to the park with a dog and look at them. And then ask yourself again, are you sure that humans have more capacity to generate welfare? I wouldn't be so sure. I think what is our main advantage as humans is our linear thinking, which uh, leads to creating languages and we have higher communicative skills. Therefore, this is our competitive uh, advantage above uh, other animals. But isn't it the case that this, exactly this capacity in the same time limits us and our capacity to experience happiness and true joy of life because we are thinking linearly. To experience life, sometimes you need to quit this typical for human thinking. And again, no matter what we say about the value of life of animals versus human, it's always our subjective uh, opinion. And for example, my subjective op opinion is that I will always evaluate innocent life higher than guilty life. So for example, of course, I will always protect and take children's side. Children are uh, innocent. But if I were to choose among the pig and a human, which I would have a knowledge that he wasn't innocent, then I dare to admit that I would choose pig's life. I can agree at one point. I cannot agree that human is more sentient. I cannot. I think this is assumption that we shouldn't take because how? 
how you can judge so. We also cannot, shouldn't assume that as human, we have higher capacity to generate welfare. But at one point, I can agree that as human, uh, we have better perspectives. So although taking cow's life versus taking human's life, I can agree that in case of human, we are taking more in the meaning that human has more perspective more chances, also longer lifespan. So taking human's life, we are taking maybe 40 years from his life. We are taking, in fact, we are taking more, more perspective, more years. This is right. But in both cases, we are taking everything. And in both cases, human as well as animal, the only person who has the right to evaluate the value is the owner of the life. Always take as point of reference the object which the question refers to. So this was the main topic I wanted to comment on, uh, but there is also a side topic. Let's move to the comment section down below uh, Lifting Vegan Logics video. Uh, we will find a comment from Vegan Gains. Okay, let's check it. So he said, I totally agree with this. The only thing is I'd rather save my own pets over the life of a random stranger just because I have a stronger emotional connection to my pets because they are family members. But it's completely ridiculous to claim that all sentient life is equal. Okay, so this is Richard's opinion. And the next comment. Vegan gains. Okay, Danny. Uh, this is fucking awesome. Proud of you. And Danny answers. Vegan gains. I know what you mean. Uh, are you saying you're choosing your pets out of emotional attachment is what you would do? What you think is moral or both? Because I would certainly choose my brother over a higher sentient alien species. But I don't know that I would want to live in a world where emotional attachment justifies differential treatment that uh, choosing my brother would be right. In my opinion, comparing those two comments, lifting vegan logics comment, I would evaluate higher. This is very important point that our emotional attachment should not be final reason of our decision because if we follow emotional attachment then all carnies are right they choose uh, they love their dogs but they don't care about pigs so this is something which is opposite to vegan thinking uh, we are trying to do what is justice and not uh, what our emotion or emotion attachments are telling us to do. So in this case, I agree with Danny. Although, yeah, of course, I appreciate Vegan Gains channel a lot for various reasons. But look, in this case, objectively speaking, Danny is more correct. But look, there is a person, uh, and even more than one, who congratulates Danny receiving a comment from Vegan Gains. Yes, this is fucking awesome. Yeah, and uh, below we have another comment from another person. Great video, bro. Love the explanation and congrats on the comment from Richard. Again, I definitely have nothing against uh, Richard and I love his channel and his job is great. I appreciate. But don't you think us as vegan, we should not follow such a fake values? This is a fake value to evaluate some of this work higher and in this case much higher because of the number of subscribers if we follow this thinking very soon we can end up as non-vegans yeah non-vegans are majority they have more power we are minority and we are the ones who fight for the truth we fight to be judged according to value of our words of our claims and not to be judged whether we are minority or majority. So if inside the vegan community there is still this kind of thinking, oh, he's higher, he's celebrity because he has more views, more subscribers, he's someone, you are nothing. So congrats that he looked at you. What the hell is this? You know, I am coming from showbiz. I won't tell you various stories, but yeah, I experienced a lot of this kind of bullshit inside show business, inside music business. Uh, one who is famous can do bullshit, but will be always adored and flattered for anything he did. 
because he is a celebrity. So I hated this. And this is something we as vegan community should be fighting against. So doesn't matter if someone has zero or one subscriber, if he's telling right things, if he's making a smart remark, we should listen to him and evaluate him equally to to so-called celebrity. So this is something which I hate. And uh, this is, okay, this is the topic which leads us to David Ram's um, channel because he is fighting exactly with the same uh, phenomenon. I love uh, David Ram's uh, channel. The direction uh, he goes uh, into, it's very close to uh, also to my work um, because he's um, questioning moral authorities of the world, like the most uh, famous authorities like uh, gurus, like Sadhguru and um, you know other famous um, uh, spiritual masters or philosophers. I think it's a very, very good direction for veganism. It's also very close to what I am doing because I am questioning the main moral authority of my country, which is a Catholic Church. Yes, this is what I am doing on a daily basis. David Trump stays in India. Actually, it is very important because although Poland is a Catholic country, many people, even those Christians, believe in reincarnation. So we are familiar with Sadhguru's works uh, i know him pretty well so i am glad that you started this uh, topic it's a very very important job but david rams uh, in in the video eckhart Tolle fans get angry they really hate me uh, he complains that the main counter argument for uh, eckhart Tolle's fans is exactly this the number of subscribers. Who are you to think? Let's listen to a short part of David Ram's video and uh, let's see those uh, comments. Eckhart Tolle has written numerous books that have impacted not only his 1 million subscribers, but millions around the world. Ram's and his 4,000 subscribers I'm sure will make some headway eventually. That's very egotistical of you to judge someone based on how many followers or subscribers they have. That's a really sad way to live, you know, just looking at how many subscribers or how popular people are to decide whether or not they have a point that's worth listening to. Who are you, David Rams? A dude with 5,140 subs, it's actually 5,170 now, which I'm pretty proud of. A dude with 5,140 subs criticizes one who has over a million followers. Where is your credibility? It's the kind of people as you who make the world look like it does violent with death and destruction, but you will not prevail in your quest. I'm promoting violence, death and destruction. I'm trying to stop people from being violent and causing death and destruction to non-human animals. Your buddy Eckhart Tolle is telling people to do what they feel is right. I'm telling people, please stop abusing animals for selfish pleasures. I am literally trying to change the world we're currently in. And again with this nonsense credibility bullshit. 1 million subscribers or followers doesn't mean that you know what you're talking about. This shows why you only have 4k subs and he has a million making content through criticism won't get you anywhere. You'll never get to a million. Can see that. I don't see why all these Eckhart followers are obsessed over the subs count. These are just people that are supposed to have overcome their ego. Like focusing on how many followers somebody has is literally the definition of ego. It's so ironic and hilarious if you haven't checked those two channels yet please necessarily do because they are both worthy to be supported by you and also please consider supporting such smaller channels like uh, those channels or even my channel of course i also love such channels like vegan gains or joey carbstrong or elsing and definitely i watch all their videos always like them and uh, very often comment but I think it's very important to care about those new small channels because look, like in case of uh, David Ram's channel, he's raising topics which others don't do. And those are very important topics. Like I said, in my country, the church is the absolutely the main obstacle of people going vegan because it's not like in case of Eckhart Tolle that he refuses to comment on morality in this case because it would be risky for him. And that's also the, the reason why he keeps his popularity. 
that he's avoiding such topics. In case of Polish church, we have the situation that church is literally fighting for animal agriculture businesses on their behalf. Poland is one of the last countries where there is still a poor industry. We have four farms. If you search for information about those farms, all the websites promoting them are Catholic websites. Priest directly says that vegans are kind of new satanists, that we are fighting against God's will because God's will is to kill animals. This is the reality I'm on everyday basis fighting with. So I think such channels who start questioning moral authorities are of a huge value. I think those small channels sometimes have ideas they others don't. So please, please care about those new small channels, support them, even financially when they, if they have Patreon. It's very important. And in case of my channel, as you see, it's mainly in Polish. And But I, like I said, I'll promise to upload videos in English regularly as well. So I also ask you to be active on my channel. I will really appreciate your support of any kind. I also leave my emails below. So if you feel like you may contact me whenever you want. Thank you very much for staying with me. We see each other soon. Bye-bye.